Okay, now I can officially say welcome to today's October 23rd Daily Bread Bible in a Year Bible reading. Uh, today's Insight Scripture is going to be uh, Psalm 37, 1 through 6, and we'll be reading Jeremiah 1 and 2, and then 1 Timothy 3. Father, we just ask that you bless the reading of your word today. And I ask that you bless those that read along with us, that those that require, or require, <laughs> that desire a relationship with you, Father, and that desire to draw closer to you and, and to increase their walk with you, Father. I ask that you in increase our knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Give us discernment of your word and, and everything in it and what it is that you're saying, Father, so that we can be the watchman on the wall, so that we can be disciples, well, not disciples, Father, you know our heart, so that we can do the Great Commission, so that we can share your word with those that do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, so that we can reach as many for you as we can while there's still time, Father. Give us that desire and that yearning to get out there and talk to folks about Jesus as much as possible. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Okay, Psalm 37, 1 through 6. Psalm 37 is one of many wisdom psalms, so-called because they teach us to cultivate a long-term mindset, fixing our hearts and minds on what truly what's truly important rather than living for short-term gain. In Psalm 37, David deals with the same perplexity that Asaph struggles with in Psalm 73. The wicked prosper, while the godly suffer unjustly. Ah, oh, man, is that no lie still to this day? Why is that? Why is that that the wicked always do so well? And mm, I'm just saying. Psalm 37 is a psalm of promise for those who seek God and a psalm of disaster for those who fail to do so. David tells those who suffer unjustly not to fret, be envious, or be angry, for God will punish the evildoers. And I know this is true. And I don't store up treasures here. I store up my treasures in heaven anyway. Instead, the godly are to patiently trust and rest fully in him and to continue to live lives set apart for God. The assurance is that the Lord upholds the righteous and will not forsake his faithful ones. This is written by K.T. Sim. Now, there are folks in Israel right now that could read this and, and maybe have a little hard time with this because they're having loved ones that were, are being slaughtered, just slaughtered, just brutally without any kind of mercy. And so they may find this a little hard, you know. So we need to pray for those folks that don't understand how a loving God would allow this sort of thing to happen that we need to help them pray for them that god will reveal to them that this you know that that he'll speak to their hearts and he'll show them you know why why this happens to those that are disobedient and to those that that do not i don't even know how to explain it we just need to pray for them and give them, you know, to, to love them and love on them and help them to get through this pain they have to be going through. See, I have someone that's kidnapping, killing, and or relocating our cats and, and refuses to tell us what he's doing with them so we'll never see these cats again, more than likely. And these are just cats. These are our fur babies, you know. These are cats. And we're talking about lives, human lives that are being taken innocent lives in Israel and in Palestine. You know, like that rocket that went, that misfired, that the Hamas had fired, and it killed uh, like 500 people in the hospital, and they're trying to blame Israel, but everyone knows now that it was Hamas. They've proven where it was shot from and everything. But nevertheless, 500 people, innocent people, died that day. You know, and, and so if the people can find it in their heart to trust God, and to forgive those people that are doing these things, you know, maybe I can trust God and forgive my neighbor for killing my cats. It's a, it's a hard pill, even if this just, you know, can't, if they don't even compare 
you know in fact I even feel ashamed for even trying to mention it but they are my fur babies and I do love them you know they're my babies and so I can't even begin to imagine how these folks must feel right now you know to find out that these these creeps went into people's homes and cut their babies heads off in their crib and slaughtered the whole family or just slaughtered part of the family and let the son watch the sister get slaughtered in front of him and left him alive to live with that the rest of his life or kill you know watched let the father watch the wife get raped and then kidnapped and taken as hostage or whatever they their sick twisted evil probably demon possessed minds decided to do so I can't even so that's that's why we should be praying for these folks on both sides of the fence because there's a lot of innocent people being affected and and a lot of them don't know Jesus so we really need to keep them lifted up in our prayers this this is the sort of thing that I pray about right now this is what's on my heart to pray about right now and for my children and for those that I do know and love that do not live for God that do not have Jesus as their number one priority or that do not know him as their personal Lord and Savior that's what's important to me right now this is this is my my strongest prayer right now and for sure Israel because those are God's chosen people. We are grafted in on that chosen people's vine. And I think it would behoove us to be on their side, be on team Jesus, team God, you know, because you bless them, he'll bless you. You curse them, he'll curse you. I digress. Psalm 37, 1 through 6. Do not fret because of evildoers, do, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as a green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Okay, and then today's insight story is surrendering to God. God doesn't help those who help themselves. I think that was, who was it that said that? Like W.C. Fields or something like that. Um, he helps those who trust in and rely on him. Jonathan Rumi, the actor who plays Jesus in the TV series The Chosen, which is based on the Gospels, realized this in May of 2018. Rumi had been living in Los Angeles for eight years, was nearly broke, had enough food just for the day, and had no work in sight. Not knowing how he would make it, the actor poured out his heart and surrendered to his career to God. I literally prayed the words, I surrender, I surrender. Later that day, he found four checks in the mail, and three months later, he was cast for the role of Jesus in The Chosen. Rumi found that God would help those who trust in him. Rather than being envious of and fretting over those who are evil, Psalm 37, 1, the psalmist invites us to surrender everything to God. When we center our daily activities on him, trust in him and do good, take delight in him, and surrender to him all our desires, problems, anxieties, and daily events of our lives, God will direct us and give us peace. Actually, I do do that. I do do that. You know, no matter what's thrown at us, I do trust in God, and I don't sweat it, except for my babies. I, I, you know, this is just getting really, just really frustrating, though, because it's like about the time that I'm forgiving him and I'm praying for his salvation, another cat disappears, and then I'm back to fighting my flesh, fighting my flesh, fighting my flesh, fighting my flesh, <laughs> to not cuss this guy out. So... You know, but everything else, though, I yeah, I do this already because I know, I know God has this and in, in every other aspect. So, this is this is definitely a flesh and spiritual battle for me right now. As believers in Jesus, it's vital for us to let Him determine what our lives should be. 
Let's surrender and trust God as we do. He'll take action and do what's necessary and best. And that was written by Marvin Williams. What parts of your life are off limits to God these days? None. None of my life is off limits. My life is not my own. It was bought at a price. Everything I have is his. I surrendered it all back in November of 2003. What will it mean for you to surrender your life to him today? Um, I did that fully in November of 2003. I, I surrendered everything. I left it all at the cross. Everything. All of it. I never looked back. Dear God, please help me to surrender to you freely today and experience your life in peace. Oh, hold on, let me open the door. In fact, last Wednesday we sang that song, I Surrender All. Yep, first, yep, first. Okay, so we're reading Jeremiah 1 and 2. So Jeremiah 1. Jeremiah called to be a priest. This is an excellent movie. Oh, man, what's that guy's name? Uh, he was in You Can't Buy Me Love. And then he was on, uh, like, uh, Grey's Anatomy, I think. Good-looking kid. Oh, Jeez, I don't know, but anyways, it, he he did a movie, uh, Jeremiah, and yeah, he did. He, he it was an excellent movie, excellent. I think I see that. I say that every time I read something from Jeremiah. The words of Jeremiah, the son of. Give me just a second. I'll tell you the name of that actor because you really do want to watch it because it's a really good portrayal of Jeremiah. It's a really good movie. I really really liked it. I like watching these movies that are. Oh gosh. You had to come in here to do that? Holy jeez. Uh, they I like certain movies that when they do, you know, uh, the scripture right on, you know, it's like, just like it's the Bible. Uh, Jeremiah. Because you can learn. It makes it easier to learn a lot. Oh, here it is. Uh, yeah. What's his name, though? On it. And it helps to learn Patrick Dempsey. Yeah, that's his name, Patrick Dempsey. And it's called, uh, it's the Bible Collection. It's the name of the YouTube channel that you can watch it on. Uh, it's a 1998 full movie uh, called Jeremiah. But anyways, it, it, it helped me to, it helped me in the study of the Old Testament because for so many years, I was never taught the Old Testament. We might just have a scripture to refer to that might pertain to what was being taught in the New Testament, but we never actually studied the Old Testament. So it wasn't until we spent a year outside of church and we were studying on our own that we started reading the Bible, you know, like I'm doing now, and we would read from the, like we're doing now, from the Old Testament and the New Testament every single day, and, and we would study it. We wouldn't just read. We would actually read what, we had two different study Bibles, and we would read what the study Bible said about you know, these scriptures, especially if there was a whole lot about it, you know. We would study, literally study, and then plus the, the different pastors on TV, on TV, on YouTube, like, you know, and it's funny because I now attend a Calvary Chapel church, but I was already watching Jack Hibbs, Calvary Chapel, in uh, Chino Hills, California. I was watching James Cadiz, Signal Hill, Calvary Chapel, Signal Hills, California. I was watching J.D. Farag, Calvary Chapel, in Hawaii. And, and then, of course, there's uh, Brandon Holton House. He's not Calvary Chapel, but he's still excellent. And he's in California, Bakersfield. So I was already watching a bunch of pastors from different Calvary chapels. So it's kind of ironic that the church we end up going to uh, is a Calvary chapel. Now, if that isn't God's hand in it, I don't know what is. But anyway, um, I forgot my point, so it must not have been important. I'll get back to the reading. I'm sorry. The words of Jeremiah, the son of... 
Hilkiah. Oh, that's what it was. Anyway, so these movies, when they're right word for word with the scripture, helps me by watching a movie and then going along with the Bible scripture, you know, it helps me to understand what it's saying and what it's about. So when I see it being played out in a movie like the movie Daniel, you'll see it on uh, Pure Flix, the movie Daniel, it helped me to understand more that way. Anyways, that's all I was going to say. The word of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests who were in Anathoth, 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 in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It also came in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. The prophet is called. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, said the Lord, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. And the word of the Lord came to me the second time, saying, What do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot, and it is facing away from the north. Then the Lord said to me, out of the north calamity shall break forth on all the inhabitants of the land. For behold, I am calling all the families of the kingdoms of the north, says the Lord. They shall come and each one set his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem against all its walls all around and against all the cities of Judah. I will utter my judgments against them concerning all their wickedness because they have forsaken me burn incense to other gods and worship the works of their own hands. Therefore, prepare yourself and arise and speak to them all that I command you. Do not be dismayed before their faces, lest I dismay you before them. For behold, I have made you this day a fortified city and an iron pillar and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against its princes, against its priests, and against the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you, for I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. God's case against Israel. This is uh, Jer uh, 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 Jeremiah 2. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, I remember you, the kindness of your youth, the love of your betrothal, when you went after me in the wilderness, in a land not sown, Israel was holiness to the Lord. The first fruits of his increase, all that devour him will offend. Disaster will come upon them, says the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What injustice have your fathers found in me, that they have gone far from me? have followed all idols and have become idolaters. Neither did they say, Where is the Lord who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and pits, through a land of drought and the shadow of death, through a land that no one crossed and where no one dwelt? I brought you into a bountiful country to eat its fruit and its goodness, but when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priest did not say, Where is the Lord? And those who handle the law did not know me. The rulers also transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things, Baal, excuse me, 
and walked after things that do not profit. Therefore I will yet bring charges against you, says the Lord, and against your children's children I will bring charges. For pass beyond the coast of Cyprus and see. Send to Keter and consider diligently and see if there has been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, which are not gods? But my people have changed their glory. For what does not profit? Be astonished, O heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very desolate, says the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn themselves east cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? Why is he plundered? The young lions roared at him and growled. They made his land waste. His cities are burned without inhabitant. Also the people of Noth and Ta Taphanes have broken the crown of your head. Have you not brought this on yourself? Is it that you have forsaken the Lord your God when he led you in the way? And now why take the road to Egypt to drink the waters of Sihor? Or why take the road to Assyria to drink the waters of the river? Your own wickedness will correct you, and your backslidings will rebuke you. Now, therefore, know, therefore, and see that it is an evil and bitter thing that you have forsaken the Lord your God. And the fear of me is not in you, says the Lord God of hosts. For of old I have broken your yoke and burst your bonds, and you said, I will not transgress. When on every high hill and under every green tree you lay down, playing the harlot. Yet I had planted you a noble vine, a seed of highest quality. How then have you turned before me into the degenerate plant of an alien vine? For though you wash yourself with lye and use much soap, yet your iniquity is marked before me, says the Lord God. How can you say I am not polluted? I have not gone after the Baals, 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 Baals. See your way in the valley. Know what you have done. You are a swift dromedary, breaking loose in her ways, a wild donkey used to the wilderness that sniffs at the wind in her desires. In her time of mating, who can turn her away? All those who seek her will not weary themselves. In her month they will find her. Withhold your foot from being unshod and your throat from thirst. But you said there is no hope. No, for I have loved aliens and after them I will go. As the thief is ashamed when he is found out, so is the house of Israel ashamed. They and their kings and their princes and their priests and their prophets, saying to a tree, You are my father. And to a stone you gave birth to me, for they have turned their back to me and not their face. But in the time of their trouble, they will say, Arise and save us. But where are your gods that you have made for yourselves? Let them arise. God is a jealous God, by the way. If they can save you in the time of your trouble, for according to the number of your cities are your gods, O Judah. Will, why will you plead with me? You all have transgressed against me, says the Lord. In vain I have chastened, chast, chastened your children. Chasten, chastened your children. They received no correction. Your sword has devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. O oh, generation, see the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness to Israel or a land of darkness? Why do my people say we are lords? We will come no more to you. Can a virgin forget? her ornaments, or bride her attire, yet my people have forgotten me days without number. Why do you beautify your way to seek love? Therefore you have also taught the wicked women your ways. Also on your skirts is found the blood of the lives of the poor innocents. I have not found it by secret search, but plainly on all these things. Yet you say, because I am innocent, surely his anger shall turn from me. Behold, I will plead my case against you, because you say, I have not sinned. Why do you gad about so much to change your way?
Also, you shall be ashamed of Egypt as you were ashamed of Assyria. Indeed, you will go forth from him with your hands on your head, for the Lord has rejected your trusted allies, and you will not prosper by them. Oh. Okay, I guess that was the end of Jeremiah 2. Qualific, okay, this is First Timothy 3. Okay. Qualifications of overseers. This is a faithful saying. If a man desires the position of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation, condemnation as the devil. Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Qualifications of deacons. Likewise, deacons must be reverent, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy for money, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. But let these also first be tested, then let them serve as deacons, being found blameless. Likewise, their wives must be reverent, not slanderers, temperate, faithful in all things. Let deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. For those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a good standing and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. The Great Mystery These things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly. But if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world received up in glory amen okay and so that looks like that is the end of today's reading of the daily bread i'll do one more video which will be our light bible study with the other reading that's uh so between the two we're technically going to read the bible in about six months um which is awesome uh do you want to thank anyone that follows these and reads with me and even if you don't that's okay uh, if you share these that's awesome because there may be other people that like to hear someone else read and I try to just stay focused and read and not go off on tangents <laughs> but sometimes when I'm reading I remember things that I've been taught and so I like to throw some stuff in there so I apologize if I get off on a on rambling uh, but I just know that I love you and Jesus loves you and anything that I do in these videos It's all because I love and because I want people to know Jesus and to 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 know that if Jesus came for his church right now that you would be going with us. Amen I mean, I I try I strive to make sure that I'm right You know that I'm I'm living right that I'm doing right that I'm serving God and doing the will of the Father. I want to make sure that I mean I even question sometimes if I'm going to get to go. So, you know, it's, it could just be Satan putting doubts in my mind. But I try to stay in this word and I try to stay about the Father's business. And because I don't care about a mansion, I care about hearing "Well done, good and faithful servant." Amen. Shalom.